white-tailed deer population has definitely increased over the years. Wildlife biologists estimate that there are over 120,000 whitetail in Massachusetts. It is believed that Sharon has approximately 25 deer per square mile. However, I do not hunt to help state wildlife biologists thin expanding herds, but that certainly is a benefit. I hunt because hunting connects me with the wilderness and my hunting ancestors. And like Spanish philosopher Jose Ortega y Gasset says in his 1929 classic, The Meditations of Hunting, I do not hunt to kill. On the contrary, I kill to have hunted. Because often, as you can see right here, if you're sitting down on the ground, it's hard to see through the trees, down the brook, out into the field. So the best way to do it is get yourself a tree stand. I can see all around me. And this is the way to get great photos of coyote. A good way to, to observe all the animals in their natural habitat. Don't have to be a hunter to enjoy a tree stand. My opinion, anyone you can, can enjoy a tree stand. You put one up in your backyard if you have woods. It's a great place just to come and sit and listen to the sounds of nature. It does wonders for the soul, I'm telling you. Another one of my favorite quotes from Meditations on Hunting is, the essence of hunting or fishing involves a complete code of ethics of the most distinguished design. The sportsman who accepts the sporting code of ethics keeps his commandments in the greatest solitude with no witnesses or audience other than the sharp peaks of the mountain, the stern oak, and the passing animal. All right, this is Ricardo. He's my son, does a great job out here in the woods. Uh, he prefers to hunt with this, this camera. Um, and this is a good way for kids to get started in the woods. You know, um, a lot of people ask me, you know, how do I get started hunting? Well, the first thing I like to say is get a camera and get into the woods in the backyard, like we are here, and Try to get as close as you can to the animals that live in your backyard. So, Ricardo and his brothers have built a ground blind. Earlier we saw a, a tree blind, uh, you know, a, a tree stand. But this is something that uh, the kids can build where they just took advantage of some granite outcroppings here, plenty of them in Sharon, and they put some rhododendron branches and some evergreen pine branches the more green you can find, the better, because it lasts a long time, because all the leaves fall off the other stuff. And they've made a nice little place where they can come in and they can sit down, and they can wait and take pictures of birds and deer or anything else that comes by. So this is a great way for kids to, to begin the outdoors. So, are you ready? You want to try to track some animals? Maybe we can find some of the deer that are living up in the, the pine grove up there? You ready? You ready to do it? Yep. Okay, let's do it. So you go first. Get down, get down, get down. There they are. They're right there. Come here, come here. Move slow, move slow, Ricardo. Film. See that? See that opening in the tree? I want you to film the deer in that opening. Okay? Shh, don't move. Move slowly. But if we use this tree to block, they won't see us. See, right through that tree. You see her? She's looking at us. She's looking at us. Don't move, don't move. You got her? Good.
Is it getting closer? The white sucker, otherwise known as Catastomus comercini, can be found in most lakes from southern Canada to the southern part of the United States. Each year, around tax time, the sucker makes their way upstream to lay over 100,000 eggs. Their eggs are adhesive and will stick to the rocky bottom until the fry are ready to make their way back to the deep water. The suckers begin their life as mid-level swimmers and after a short time descend to the bottom of the lake to make use of their subterminal mouths and become the vacuum cleaners of Lake Massapog. So they're a hardy fish and uh, I'm sure the, uh, the Native Americans found this fish very uh, edible. Uh, this is a small one relatively, this is probably about a 17 or 18 inch fish and there are some giants in here so now that I know that they're in here I think I'm going to go get my boys and bring them back here so they can run around and catch some. And maybe they'll catch one that's a couple feet long and uh, be kind of interesting. A lot of fun for the kids. So we'll be right back. So you guys ready to go get the suckers? Yeah. Let's go. Let's go do it. And so the cycle continues. For hundreds of years, the white sucker has found the stream and made their way up the creek to lay their eggs and start a new life. And just as my father brought me to the rivers of my youth, I will walk in the water with my sons and do my best to teach them how to enjoy the magical world of the great outdoors. Let's make sure I got the shot. Look out, turn around. Spin this around there like one more time. Okay. Look out for a second. Okay, we bring it down. Okay. There's the shot right there, bud. Now look through that viewfinder. Right there. That's the shot that we're gonna get. And when a deer walks through this this uh, scene, the uh, infrared light will go on and we'll have a picture. Cool. All right, we'll come back in a few days and see what we got. Mm -hmm. Ready to fish? Yep. Let's do it. Let's watch how a fish is raised from a little egg all the way to a three pound monster ready to be released in a pond near you.
Thank you.